Hello guys and welcome back to the third episode of my Fortnite tutorial series. Today we will wrap up the stat system that we started to work on in the last episode. But before we do that there is one thing I need to mention. Epic Games released a new version of Unreal Engine which is called 4.19.2 which includes a lot of bug fixes. So if you're following along with the series please update to 4.19.2. It will not break anything in the project and we will use that version presumably for the rest of the series. Now we're back in the stat bar widget where we left off in the last episode and we were done with designing our widget. However yet there is no functionality for it. Taking a quick look at Fortnite again you will see that we will use this widget here to display both the health and shield bar and the only difference between those two really is the icon on the left side here and the color of the bar. For us that means that these two things have to be variables. So let's create them. We will go to the graph here and under variables we will add one. First let's start with the icon. So let's just call that icon or stat icon and the variable type for that will be a texture 2d object reference. Then we will need the color of our bar. So let's just call that bar color and the variable type here will be a linear color. While we're at it let's create the other variables needed in here. A bar has to display how much percent of a stat is left. So it needs information about the current value, maximum value and also minimum value. That means we need three integer variables here. So hit the plus icon again. Let's call the first one min value which will be an integer. Next one current value and the third one will be max value. The minimum and maximum value will be defined when we start playing the game and the current value might change over the course of the game which means that we have to initialize our bar with the minimum and maximum value and to keep track of whether we already did that let's add a boolean that we will call initialize question mark as I said, variable type will be boolean. Now when we create this widget, we want to update our little stat icon here and the color of our bar according to the two variables we just added. So to do that, let's right click, search for event construct, which is the equivalent to event begin play in other blueprint classes. And here we will start with the icon. So drag in the icon, get it. And the function we will use is called set brush from texture. Now it will ask for a texture which is our stat icon variable. And you can check the match size here because all of our icons have the same size. For the bar color, let's first drag in our bar. And here we need to set the fill color and opacity. And if you hover over that in color, it will ask for a linear color structure. So just what we created with our bar color variable, get it and connect it. That's it for event construct. Then let's add a function to update the stat. So every time our current value change, we will call that function. Update stat. And we will give this function one input pin, which will be the new current value. So of type integer, let's call that new value. But before we do anything in here, we actually need to check whether we initialize that bar. So drag in the initialized, get it and add a branch. Connect that to the function. If our bar hasn't been initialized yet, we will just return. However, if it is, we can set the current value to the new value here. Then we also have to worry about updating our little text here. So get the current text, set text. And it will just display our current value. However, that is an integer and it is asking for a text. So let's drag in our current value and off of it we will search for two text. And if you hit that little drop arrow here, there are custom settings that you can modify. For example, we will uncheck the use grouping. If you don't know what grouping is, I'll just quickly show this in the video here. All right, let's collapse this function again and connect the return value to the in text. The last thing we need to update is the percentage of our bar. So let's drag in the bar, search for set percent, then it will ask for a float which is somewhere in between 0 and 1. So 0.5 will be 50%. Figure out that percentage, we have to do a little bit of math. So to get the percentage with a minimum and maximum value, you drag in the current value. From the current value, you subtract the minimum value. Then we will convert that to a float and divide it by the maximum value minus minimum value. So we can just copy over our subtraction here, paste it, 
replace the current value by the max value. You can just drag that pin onto our division node and it will automatically convert it for you. And then we can plug that float that we get here into our in percent. After that, let's just return, compile, save this function and let's close it. Now the only thing left in here is a way to initialize that bar. So we can do that using a custom event called initialize bar and we will need information about the minimum current and maximum value. If you remember back in episode number two we created a struct that contains these three values so let's use this as an input here. New parameter type for that will be s underscore stat value and we can just call that stat value or stat info something like that. Then we will break it here. Now we've got access to minimum, current and max and let's set up our variables here. So first we will set the min value, set it to this one, do the same thing for the current value. And by the way, just a quick little tip, if you drag in a variable, you will need to specify whether you want to get or set it. To skip this, you can just hold alt while dragging in a variable and you will automatically get a setter. If you hold control, you will get the getter node. So we will set the max value to the max value from our break node, hook everything up to the custom event. Then we can tell our widget that it has been initialized. So we will just set our boolean here to true. And if we have a look at our widget again, we have a text here that displays the maximum value. So we also need to update that here. The maximum value will not be changed during gameplay. So it is enough to set the text one time in our initialize bar function. Drag in our max text, get it and set text. Let's grab our maximum value, connect that to the in text. It will do a to text conversion for us. And again, uncheck use grouping. The only thing left here will be to update the stat display. So let's call our update stat function and the new value being our current value. Now you see that it's really important to set the initialize boolean first before calling the update stat function because if we go in there and our initialize would be false, we would directly go to that return node here. So that's everything for the logic in our stat bar. Let's just quickly minimize this and open up our main widget because we want to integrate our stat bar in the main widget. We still got that white box here. Let's remove that. Don't need it. And now under user created, if you expand that, you will see the w underscore stat bar. Let's drag that in. Right now the size of it looks really weird. To fix it, you just hit the size to content boolean here. And as I said, we want to modify the icon here and the fill color. However, we haven't got access to that when we select the stat bar. What you need to do is go back to your stat bar and make the stat icon and bar color instance editable and expose on spawn. If we compile now and save, go back to the main widget. There is a new category here called default and it will ask for a stat icon and a bar color, right? Let's just select the shield icon here really quickly. Icon underscore shield from the texture pack. And let's give it a bar color, maybe something like pink with an alpha of one. If we hit okay and compile, then play. We see that our bar has updated properly. However, you don't see this changes in the editor, which would be pretty handy. There is a way to make that happen that I will show you really quickly. If we go back into our stat bar, updating the icon and bar will take place on event construct right now. If we were to replace this event construct by an event called event preconstruct and hook that up, then compile and save, go back to our main widget, you see that it updated properly already in the editor here. And if we play, it still looks fine. Now we can finally close the stat bar. Don't need that anymore. And our first bar that we dragged in here, let's call that shield bar. Make sure it's a variable. We need to access it later. And again, looking at Fortnite, the bars are placed at the lower center of the UI. So to do that, we will go to anchors, select the lower center one here. Then we will align it to 0.5 in X and one in Y. If we then reset the position in X and Y to zero, it will be placed at the very lower corner here. However, there is a little bit of offset to the very bottom in Fortnite. So in Y, we will enter a value like minus 150, for example. We already set up the icon underscore shield and now we need to add the bar color. In Fortnite, that's a very saturated blue color. So I'll just double click on this and I will add a hex linear code. If you want to get the exact same results that I do, I will also put the hex linear code in the video description. So you can just copy it from there. The code I will use is 
zero f five two b six f f hit OK. And we need a second bar for the health bar. So let's just right click, copy and paste it onto our canvas. Call it health bar. Position in X will be zero. And to place it beneath the shield bar, we will lower the position in Y to minus 115. As the stat icon, we will select our icon underscore health. And the bar color is a saturated green. Again, the hex linear code will be in the video description. And it will be 1F8309FF. All right, hit OK. If we compile and save, hit play, you will see our two stat bars, which look fine. Okay, we've got them in our UI, that's good. However, currently they are not really representing a value because we didn't create the player stats component yet. Let's close our main widget. Go into our blueprints and classes subfolder. And we want to create a child class of our stat manager that defines the stats of the player. So right click, create child blueprint class. Let's call that PPC for blueprint component underscore player stats or player stats manager, whatever you want. Open it up and under class defaults, we've got our stats. So we want to add health and shield to this. Let's hit the plus. Start off with shield. The shield has a minimum value of zero, maximum value of 100 and it starts at zero. So we set the current to zero. Add another one called health, and that starts at the maximum value. So we will set current to 100, pile and save. Don't need event begin play and event tick in here. So remove these. However, what we need is a reference to our player because in here we need to be able to access the main widget and then access the health and shield bar in it. So under variables, let's hit the plus button, player ref. And the variable type is a third person character object reference. Or it could be a first person character based on what template you are using. Also, let's make our lives a little bit simpler by adding a function that will return the stat bar for a specific stat. So under functions, let's hit plus and let's call that get bar for stat. It will need one input and one output. The input is the stat. So an E underscore stats, just call it stat. And the output will be the bar. And the type of that is a W underscore stats bar, or stat bar, object reference. And like in the second episode, we will make that a pure function because it only returns a value and doesn't really execute any logic. So hit that pure here. Now based on the stat, we want to select a variable that we got from our player ref and then from the main widget. So first off, let's drag in the player reference. From the player, we will get the main widget. From the main widget, we will get the health bar and the shield bar. To select one of these off of our stats, we will drag and search for the select node. Currently, you will see this gray or green pins here, which means that there is no variable type specified right now. However, if we drag the return value onto our bar, it will automatically convert these pins to the type that we specified for the output. So now that is a W underscore stat bar object reference, exactly what we want. Hook up the shield bar to shield, health bar to health. And for the empty stat, we will just not return anything at all. Compile, save, close that function. In here, we need a way to set that player reference. So let's add a custom event that we will just call initialize manager. And that will need an input, which we will just call player. Type for that, again, third person character or whatever template you're using. Let's set the player reference to that input. And after that, we will call the setup stat function that we created in the parent class of this. You might remember that is the one that's responsible for making sure that our values are in the range of our minimum and maximum value and that we will remove any empty stats from our stats map or dictionary. So let's call the setup stats function or event. Here it will also tell you that the target is the master stat manager because in this child class we didn't override that function. However, what we want to override is the on stats setup event which is called after all stats were set up. To override it, we'll go to our functions, hit the little override button and select the on stats setup. Because after we've set the values of the stats, we want to display them on our UI by initializing the bars. To do that, we first have to get all of our stats. However, if you have a look at our variables here, it only reads player ref. That is because that variable is created in our parent and to access it, we have to right click and just search for stats, get stats. We will get the keys 
which are just the names of the stats, not the values. Then run it for each loop off of the array here. And for each stat that we found, we will get bar for stat. The stat that it's asking for is coming from our array element. And then off of our bar, we will call the initialize bar function. Now it will also ask for a stat value. And we can just get that by calling our get stat function. That again comes from our array element and the stat value will go into that function call here. Then there is only one function left we need to override, which is the update stat function that was left empty in our parent class. So under override, update stat. You might be wondering why this is an event, because if we have a look at our parent class, the update stat is a function. However, we didn't specify any outputs and every function without outputs will be converted to an event in shell classes. So that's just something to keep in mind when setting up your functions. Really, the only thing we have to do here is get the bar for stat. Stat comes from the input here and call the update stat function. It will ask for a new value and to get this, we will just get the stat. Again, stat comes from our input and plug in the current value for the new value. Compile and save and that's everything for our BPC player stats. What is left to do now is to actually add this component to the player. So let's close it, go to our third person character and open the blueprint editor. To the very left you will see a green button labeled add component. So let's hit that and search for our player stats. If we select that, we could also modify the stats in here. Don't want to do that right now already set them up properly. The component, however, doesn't know about the player yet, so we need to initialize it. We will do that before we add the main widget to the viewport, but the main widget variable has to be set before it. So drag in the BPC player stats, initialize manager, hook that up, and the player will just be a reference to ourselves. So search for self and hit enter. File and save. If we hit play now, that looks perfectly fine. Our health and sheet values are properly set up. 0 of 100 and 100 of 100. To test whether they are really work, let's set up some debugging keys that will just increase and decrease our stats. So I will use the O and P key for the shield. Let's search for O and hit enter. When we press O, drag in the player stats and we create that handy function called modify stat. We will just modify our shield by let's say minus 30. Then let's search for the P key, scroll up until you found it here. You can drag off of the same variable here, modify stat again, shield, but this time by plus 30. And let's copy the two function calls, paste them and exchange the shield for health. The two keys I'll be using here will be K and L. So let's look for K, key, scroll up a bit. And finally L, that one. All right, compile and save. Hit play. Our health is currently at 100, so if we hit L, nothing should happen. If I hit K, it will be reduced. 70, 40, 10, and finally 0, and then nothing happens. I can hit L again to increase it. And for the shield, currently nothing should happen if I press O, because it's at 0, nothing happens. And if I press P, it will go up to 100. All right, so that's working properly. The only thing left I want to show you is that our component will spot and correct issues. For example, let's go into our player stats and for the shield, let's enter a minimum value of 50, maximum value of 200 and a current value of, let's say, minus 10. Now, if everything is set up correctly, your current value should be clamped to 50. Let's hit play and that happened. And just for the sake of it, let's also play around with the health here. So let's set the minimum to 200 maybe, maximum to 400 and the current to 600. And if everything is set up correctly, that should also be clamped to the 400, which is our maximum. And if we play, that's happening. Perfect, so let's close it. We can reset our stats. So shield minimum zero, health minimum zero, current value zero for the shield and 100 for the health and maximum will be 100 for both. Compile and save and that's it for this episode. In the next one we will build our resource system also using extra components. So see you then.